all right so this uh this is how it's done i got the parallel port here hooked up now i had to drop the voltage because the voltage was too high on the the pin on the input pin from from the chip from the chip there there's the bios chip i wired it up with magnet wire and uh, that was the easiest. If you're using plastic wire, it's gonna be hell on earth. So just use that, the thinnest magnet wire you can find. I smashed a wall wart uh, on, the, on the concrete, got it out of there. This is the bypass transistor. It's a surface mount, I'm sorry, a bypass capacitor, surface mount capacitor. Got this uh, powered into a regulator. Uh, this is the regulator here cheap again just something i rigged up there uh adjustable regulator uh nte 956 can dial it up or down bought that off uh ebay and um the problem i was having and see this is why i'm making this video because it was it's very disturbing when you have to do something like this and your computer quits so that's why i'm trying to help these people out that are viewing the video here help you guys out so this is an old meter it's very old um, but it works it works so I'm gonna show you what happens hopefully I can get this to run here so here's the software it's SPIP SPI PGM SPI PGM you can get that on the internet um, what you got to make sure is the uh, this is the um, interrupt. I believe it's the interrupt for the PC for the LPT port, the parallel port. It's not standard on this unit because of the dock. This is a T60 laptop. What's left of it, and the dock is not part of the laptop. It has a different interrupt. It's probably some kind of PCI card, uh, and that must be specified. Flash ROM does have the binary file, but uh, it, it does support, I'm sorry, Flash ROM does support rare SPI. Um, that is the uh, device that can, that is the program to use this sort of device to program a chip. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do is, is the slash I, the switch to identify. This is correct here. Uh, it's... Uh, identifies correctly and I'm going to show you how I get this to work here so what I do is I add a delay of 10 seconds that's going to wait it's going to clock for 10 seconds and you're going to watch this here I'm going to touch this here to the output pin and you're going to see that uh, that meter there Well, hopefully if I turn it on again here, too slow. Hmm. It should work here. I don't know what the deal is. Okay, there it went. I'm just trying to show you guys how this works because if it doesn't put out data you're never going to read it and you got to measure this I'm going to turn up this uh, clock here and what's the, what it, what this is doing is pulling the chip See that? You got to get it to do this. If you don't get it to do this, you'll never get it to work. You have to see it write data or read data. You have to see the chip try to write data out. Okay. So now we've established that the chip is doing something. The chip isn't dead. Um, it's uh, it's alive. It reports, but without this voltage, 
check out this voltage here. This is one volt. It's the scale is 12. This is one volt here. This parallel port registers a low as I believe 0.8. That's how I set the level there with that variable resistor. Without that variable resistor, it'll be around 5 volts, 4, and the port won't trigger. That's why I'm making this video here. You put that resistor to ground and to the, the data output pin of the chip. I believe it's, uh, it's on this side. The pin 1 is right up in there. So you'll have to look at the schematic and, and figure that out, but this goes straight to ground, this resistor. It pulls the pin down so that the, the unit can read it. Now, I haven't tried anything yet. I haven't even rebooted it. I wanted to make this video and show you guys, uh, show you what happens without this resistor. So I'm all done. I've already programmed it, checked the, the file, everything. Uh, did a comparison. And um, yeah, let me cut this off because it's critical that you get this this information I spent a day on this so unfortunately the soldering irons not hot. but uh, let's see here yeah, this will work. so I'm just gonna clip this clip this resistor out of the circuit Okay, okay, this is clipped out of the circuit. Now you'll see, look at that. Three, three point two. Too high, too high to trigger a low. Let me, let me turn this on here. See if we'll get it to talk. No action. <clears throat> well, that's not good. Anyway, without that dropping resistor, uh, it'll never work. And that's why I'm making the video. So take that to heart there. And it's not working now either. So it's so critical to have that resistor there. Um, as you can see, something's wrong. Uh, but uh, I probably broke a wire when I was cutting that resistor off. Well, it's not relevant. Let's see here. Yep. Had it touching. Had it touching there. Now it's a little higher. Well, I'm going to clip it off anyway, but I wanted to show you guys what the deal is.